Hi, sweetheart. It's Rowan, and I was kind of tagged in the uh, comment section on my uh, my my friend and subscriber, uh, Gothic Soul Flower. She sort of tagged me in the uh, what's it called? Uh, the comment section on her video of the same topic, and I'm going to link to hers and the originator of. Uh, this, um, why I became a YouTuber tag, that would be, uh, at least in the, you know, uh, YouTube goth community, um, I think this kind of started with, uh, Midnight Owl, but, um, as usual, if you know of somebody who made earlier versions of this, um, please let me know in the comments, or, like, over the tweeters, or whatnot, and, um, at least the ones that I, you know, from people I otherwise watch, or the videos that I otherwise enjoy, I will link to those. I'm not going to link to everybody's, and as per usual, I'm making this and uploading this from my phone, so if I forget to go to my computer and... Um, add links right away. Just, just please remind me. I'm a very, very forgetful person. So I, uh, I actually scripted this because <laughs> I've already been going on for about two minutes almost, and I wanted to ramble as little as possible. So I'm going to be reading from where did the cursor go? Cursor, cursor. There we go. Um, so I'm going to be reading from my laptop because it makes less glare than the desktop. And plus I can be out in my front room where I've got a little better light. Uh, for now it's 526 in the PM. Uh, so reasons I became a YouTuber and if you want the transcript, um... Or at least the original script for this. Uh, it is going to be on my dead journal, which uh, is Ruin1334, R U A D H A N 1334, uh, dot com. So, uh, let's see. Uh, why did I start the YouTubing? So, first and foremost, it looked a like a bit of fun. I tried getting into YouTube ages ago. Uh, but, you know, that was still, uh, before transitioning, and, you know, uh, dysphoria can be a real bitch to deal with, so, um, and, you know, thankfully, seldom pops up these days, at least for myself, being, um, you know, post-op up top, uh, post-op down below, and, uh, about, oh shit, uh, ten years this... Devil's Night, you know, which would be October 30th, which seems to be a thing that only really, it originated in the Metro Detroit area where I grew up, and it seems to have spread out to a couple other Midwestern states, but most other places just have kind of their own version of it, you know, if they do Halloween, so like, um, October 30th, <laughs> that, um, you know, um, the whole Devil's Night thing, it started in Michigan, so... Uh, what was I going with this? Oh, yeah, uh, so, you know, the early transitioning false starts on YouTube that I had, uh, I had a shit camera and got really discouraged. Like, I think I might still have that camera. It's this little, like, you know, um, semi-spherical thing on a little, um, tiny bit of a stand that would sit, that's designed to sit up on top of, you know, one of those huge-ass monitors with the... Um, there's a name for it, but it's the, like, you know, before the flat screens, those big, huge-ass things. Ah, uh, um, so, uh, you know, had a shit camera, got discouraged. Uh, then, um, when I got a slightly better camera, that was around the time that, um, uh, Microsoft discouraged Windows Movie Maker, so I had no way to edit things, uh, and got discouraged again, uh, because I is Pope. 
uh, still seem like a bit of fun, but you really can't have fun with it when you can't do it your way. And so that's what took me so long. Like, I think I started really doing things again in, like, November or December of 2017. So, uh, I've got an inexpensive video editor. Uh, I was using the free version of Kind Master until, I want to say, February. Uh, it's about $5 a month to, um, be able to do it without the watermark and some added, um, features. Not very much, but it gets the job done, and why is this, uh, um, so, you know, um, you know, eventually some nicer gear would be nice. I have no interest in a ring light, though, because, um, even with, um, just the, uh, the light from, um, uh, from my, uh, my, my phone and everything. Um, a plus, like, when I see people who need glasses using a ring light, ring lights do not work well with glasses. Like, you end up with some shit like this all the time. Um, you know, or, you know, yeah, it reflects in a lot of people's eyeballs, but it goes even more so with glasses. I have no interest in that. I like the you know, natural light I use a lot of times, or even my, um, my antique floor lamp when I use that. Um, so I, I like my lighting to be my lighting. I don't like this generic sort of thing that a lot of people do, so, <laughs> uh, so, uh, then where was I going? Uh, so reason number two, not this way, <laughs> uh, reason number two, uh, is I live with chronic pain, and so my abilities to go out as regularly as I would like to are very limited, and so this seemed like a nice way to expand my social interactions, so, uh, and honestly, I've been getting a lot of discouraged with by Facebook lately, um, there's a lot of groups that I'm in the process of leaving, and I'm not one of those jackasses who's just like, I'm leaving this group, uh, you know, just before I leave, because, like, what's the point? What's the point? Um, so basically, I'm not a big fan of a lot of the left book dramas going on. There are still a couple groups that I, um, that I assist in moderating, uh, that I will stick around in, at least for the time being. Um, one of them being, uh, Erica Noen, N-O-E-N. Uh, <laughs> this would be, you know, the, uh, you know, a, uh, a, a, uh, hate group for, uh, centered around, a comic artist, Erica Moen, who is all kinds of problematic, and so, like, we're united under one specific topic, so, um, you know, and so for the most part, we just get along, because we're all in this together. Um, by the way, if you like her work, my opinion of you is going down. There's, uh, she's got a huge history of racism, um, cis-sexism, I mean, she, she leaves, even though she insists otherwise with words, talk is cheap, because she leaves hints all over the place that she does not actually think of trans people as the genders we say we are. There was a very infamous, um, comic when she was still doing, um, her more autobiographical strip, Dar, um, about how, you know, oh, I'm not at all interested in cis men, but trans men are just, they're ridiculous, and she's saying this as she's, you know, like, newly married to her cisgender male husband, and they've been, they've been together about 12 years, married about the last 10 of those, <laughs> So, obviously, that's a lie. <laughs> you know, she just wants to fetishize trans people, and then she did a comic a few years ago reviewing a, um, a Packer, 
uh, I'm going off script here right now <laughs> with this aside, um, reviewing a packer, you know, which if you're unfamiliar, there you know, it's uh, made of a soft pliable silicone that feels sort of skin-like, yeah, it's... It's not perfect, but, you know, she's doing this review of it wherein she basically admits that she goes out wearing it with her husband basically so that she can pretend she's a trans woman. You know, like, she wants to be a chick with dick, and that's so sexy and cool. I'm like, oh my god, you only think this is sexy and cool because, you know, your safety is not at risk in doing this, so she she's a horrible person, and if you enjoy her work, um, in spite of knowing all of this, my 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 opinion my tr I, I, my trust of you to you know actually treat me and my friends decently it it goes down. I I do. <laughs> She's a horrible person who, for some reason, gets paid thousands of dollars per comic via her Patreon supporters to be a horrible person. She gets endorsements from... It's... And she's a terrible artist, too. Like, her art is genuinely terrible. <laughs> Like, people will de go on in detail about how her art is not good. It's not, it's barely passable most of the time. But, you know, I'm going off script now, so, uh, so basically, like, I'm leaving a lot of Facebook groups right now that, um, that basically are more social oriented rather than, um, groups that I can use to, um, promote my own, um, my own work, be it, you know, my music, my art, um, my DJing, um, uh, you know, and peripherally my station, um, you know, and local groups that I'm on basically for events so that I can go out and promote my music, my art, my DJing, my station. So, then what happens? Uh, so, then what I said next is, um, um, and YouTube, um, as opposed to Facebook, uh, gives a closer approximation to in-person interactions. It's not perfect, again, um, but... I'm I'm very old school, you know, I've got to talk to you on, like, Usenet and all that for a while before I give you out my, you know, Skype and whatnot for you, uh, and Usenet doesn't exist anymore, which is how old I am, so it's like, I've got to interact with you in the comments at least a little bit before I give out, like, you know, my Skype and my other and finger wiggly things, um, you know, private messengers sort of things. In fact, I don't I, I don't like it when people go searching me out on Facebook and they try to friend my main profile, which at this point I'm really trying to, you know, start using only for, you know, to operate my pages. So feel free to add my pages, you know, for my music or my DJing or my, um, or my buttons and jewelry. Um, if I don't add you back on, um what's it called, my, my profile, please don't be offended, it's just, I'm trying to get away from P Facebook, um, as a primary source of interaction, interacting with people on the internet, so, uh, in spite of being hashtag team chronic pain slash illness, which is a really crappy team to be on, but you've got some of the best company on here, uh, so I haven't delved much into the YouTube, um, chronic illness people, though I do watch people who, you know, are also, you know, overlapping with those communities on YouTube, like, uh, Midnight Owl, who's been very open about, uh, living with chronic Lyme disease, and, uh, Queenie Todd, and I believe, uh, Ashling O'Neill is how it's pronounced, I don't remember, uh, Ashley O'Neill, um, uh, and I believe they're both living with fibromyalgia. I know the latter says she is, and I think Queenie Todd says they are as well. 
Uh, I can't relate to their specific things because that's not what I live with. What I live with is I have a spinal curvature that my own personal physician, who's been my, you know, my, my primary doctor. Hello, Miss Phoebe. Miss Phoebe. Okay, yeah, I'm annoying you. <laughs> She's been my personal physician since I was about 15 years old. Uh, and she says that um, the way my spine curves, and I've also got some misaligned vertebrae, but the, um, but the spinal curvature itself, she's only ever seen um, uh, before, you know, like, aside from me, she's only seen it in people with the chondroplasic dwarfism. And um, I have a couple... I have, like, another, um, uh, also associated with chondroplasic dwarves is that I'm fairly, um, bow-legged, and I recently put a photo on Instagram of how my knees, <laughs> you know, are very far from straight, and, um, I've got one friend whose, you know, legs kind of jut, uh, whose knees kind of jut like that, um, but, um, they were saying that mine are far more pronounced. So, um, but, uh, uh, you know, though most people with that particular form, you know, so a chondroplasic dwarfism have other physical traits that I obviously lack, such as, you know, that very boxy, you know, longer face shape. Obviously, you know, mine is, you know, a bit more, um, square but compact uh, uh, and very short limbs proportionate to torso and while my limbs do seem on the shorter end proportionate to torso it's not pronounced at all like most people don't even notice until they're sitting next to me and they notice that you know yeah I'm 411 but you know like uh, oh, my friend Katie, uh, she wants to know, and she's about five foot seven, five foot eight, and she noticed when I was living with her and her now ex-husband, um, you know, in their spare room for a while, uh, you know, when I sit next to her on the couch, um, I'm almost as tall as she is. It's just when I stand up, my legs are obviously quite short. For in fact, one of my legs is shorter than the other in a way that's, you know, kind of noticeable, especially if you, if you watch me walking. Um, so, but because I am over four foot ten, um, and four ten is the cutoff height for being able to, you know, be medically classified as a dwarf, um, and I'm little under four eleven and a half, um, so, uh, in order to get a proper diagnosis with any form of dwarfism, whether it be a chondroplasic or otherwise, I'd need a DNA analysis, and my doctor doesn't feel the need to do that, just because she's like, you know, you've got so many other physical, <laughs> you know, you've got physical impairments, it's just, you know, it would just be a curiosity, I don't know if we could get Medicare to cover it, just because, you know, you're not short enough to, you know, qualify as a dwarf, so this would just be out of curiosity, and... Birdie! Um, so, uh, I'm also, uh, pretty open about how I'm borderline low vision, so in my case, it means I have no practical peripheral vision, uh, and it's got nothing to do with, you know, the fact that I've got the, uh, the white, the heavier temple pieces than a lot of people do. A lot of people have the thinner temple pieces, so you can get a bit more out of there. I, you know, this has nothing. Even with the thinner temple pieces, I've got nothing. So it's, like, here it's just to, you know, discourage me from trying to, you know, strain my eyes too much. Um, but in my case, I've got no practical amount of peripheral vision, and even with, um, my, uh, prescription being quite strong, I hope you can see that, I can't see that until I go to edit in a, after I'm done with this. So, even with this prescription, which is quite, quite strong, uh, I've got about 2080 visual acuity, um, 
you know, to, um, like I said, I'm on the borderline, so low vision is 20-80 acuity in your best eye, um, and legal blunt, you know, with best possible prescription, and I've got somewhere like 20-80 combined, I forget which, you know, what the good eye is, what the bad eye is. I think the bad eye is closer to 20-100, 21-20, so, you know, they kind of even out at 20-80. Um, and then legal blindness is, with the best possible prescription, you've got 2200 visual acuity. So, I'm not legally blind, I'm just too blind to drive. So, my ability is to go out and about and meet new people and see my friends is limited by wherever the bus can take me. So, I've considered taking the bus up to, you know, Detroit. I've got a, I've actually got a DJ gig coming up in September. Uh, where I may need to take the Greyhound, because Megabus doesn't go from Ann Arbor to um, Grand Rapids. So I'm going to need to take the Greyhound and, you know, just end up making it an overnight, because I won't be able to leave until the next day because of the way that the buses go about. So, um, and that's if I can't find a ride, and... You know, so I'd need $50, so basically I'd be making a net 50 since my payment for that would be $100. Uh, oh, she did offer to, uh, to reimburse whoever I can get to drive for the gas, so I could argue if I can't get a proper ride, like, you know, this is basically, like, about what gas money would cost. So, okay, that could work. Um, so yeah, I'd be taking out the Greyhound to go do this, um, and I'd have to arrive a lot earlier and then leave, like, very early the next morning. It's, it's gonna be something, isn't it? <laughs> um, uh, da, 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 da. uh, so, uh, if you do want to check me out elsewhere on various private, um, social medias, um, Twitter, which I've actually grown to like a little bit more than Facebook lately, and I don't know, I think it's just the nature of the website that, you know, yes, you can get into arguments with people, but, you know, you have to, you know, take it directly to the point you're trying to make. And, yeah, there are people who will still intentionally miss the point, but, you know, like all other social media platforms, except for Facebook, which due to the nature of that site, is... It's like the the worst aspects of social media are amplified on Facebook, likely due to the nature of how that site is designed. But, uh, you know, Twitter, um, Reddit, um, Tumblr, I'm on all of those as Rowan1334, so R-U-A-D-H-A-N-1334. Ah, uh, and for better or for worse, um, um, you know, the, I, I really don't think any one of these is any better than the other. Again, you can follow me on, uh, Reddit, be all stalky and stuff. Um, I'm kind of getting away from using my primary Tumblr as anything more than just, like, a dump of reblogs of pictures and, you know, occasionally promoting my music and art. Uh, just because, honestly, while I don't find Reddit and Tumblr any better or worse than the other one is, uh, I think the nature of Tumblr just harbors a lot more toxicity. <laughs> Whereas Reddit is closer in setup to the old school message boards and even Usenet to some extent, you know, it's it's much more easily comparable to that sort of setup where it is almost completely text based, you know, with also, you know, links and sometimes people will post pictures and videos, but it's usually via links. You know, and um you know, and depending on which, um, in Tumblr it's tag-based, in Reddit it's 
sub-based, you know, which is basically like a forum using Reddit as its platform. Um, you know, depending on where you go, it's either, you've got either some really great people, or you've got some really nasty people, and even within those, there are some, you know, really great and really nasty people who stand out compared to the rest of the, you know, area of both. It's just, I don't know, the nature of Tumblr just makes it harder for me to get along with people. Um, unless I'm, like I said, only using it as a dump to reblog photos and shit. Uh, I have actually also been getting back into, you know, um, journaling type sites. I'm on Dead Journal as a uh, Rowan1334, so R-U-A-D-H-A-N 1334.deadjournal.com. I mentioned that at the beginning of this, didn't I? As I said, I'm going off script. If you want to see the original version that I'm kind of working from. So, uh... Um, and lastly, similar to, um, one of Gothic Soulflower's reasons for getting into YouTube and YouTubing, uh, I have been hoping to promote my music, which I haven't done a whole lot of, um, whereas, you know, she's hoping to promote her paintings and other arts. Uh, I'm a classically trained lyric tenor, though pre-transition this was a uh, lyric mezzo-soprano. Uh, and uh, most of my early training was choral, and I had some operatic uh, until my mother burned some final bridges, and I lost that, but, you know, because I've been unable to, you know, well, I lost the training, and I've been unable to, you know, like, afford somebody private myself. And my father refused to pay for it when I was in high school. Uh, but I do understand the techniques of, se of that and several other styles of singing. I, you know, sing a little bit of many kinds of styles. Um, unfortunately, right now, uh, my only uh, video I've got up where I'm singing would be where a uh, cover of uh, Virgin Prunes at Sweet Home Under White Clouds. Uh, if I don't link to that in the description box right away, again, please remind me. You can also easily find it in my video list on, uh, on YouTube, you know, or just search, um, Rowan, Sweet Home, Virgin Prunes, whatever. Um, most of my music, uh, focused videos lately have been either live streams when I'm DJing on WFKU, Tuesdays, Eastern U.S. time, noon to three, uh, that is more or less a standing schedule, um, and occasionally, uh, when I'm recording, I will, um, live stream that occasionally. Um, I also have a background in viola. I studied viola from about grades three through seven, so about four years Mm, excuse me. Uh, I can't remember why I gave that up, but I got back into viola in my late 20s um, in string ensemble in school. Uh, it was mostly classical, obviously, uh, because not a lot of people write for viola, and like I said, it's string ensembles, so... Um, but we did do a few um, soul and jazz-based piece pieces as well. Uh, I also... Um, brought out my viola and used it very prominently in my soundtrack for um, Un Chanon de Lou uh, that I did with my friend Jason Crow about, oh shit, 12 years ago now? I think that was uh, 20-06 when we did that, maybe 20-07. Uh, and you can listen to that on Bandcamp, hopefully buy it. Uh, yes, the price is a bit for two 16 plus minute tracks but this is what it's worth to me you know so um i i don't i i i understand that a lot of people have better luck with name your price um things but uh this is this is a piece that i'm very attached to and um you know emotionally spiritually uh, so, yes, it 
costs you know it's like two dollars each track or something like something like that and um i think i've got it set up to save a dollar when you buy the little ep setup i've got for it um and I've recently, for the last couple of years, picked up Harmonium Teaching It Myself, which has been, uh, I've been, um, in the efforts of learning that, uh, that, that has been fueled by my love for the music of Nico, and even though she's really well known for her Harmonium music, <clears throat> excuse me, it is, I've found it impossible to find videos of her actually playing that, so... I learned, you know, just from observing how to make it work and how to make music with it when I had gone to, um, you know, just like the free uh, vegetarian dinner with chanting and Bhagavad Gita discussion from the Hare Krishna house here in downtown Ypsilanti. Uh, a couple of the women who live there um, play harmonium. So, you know, during the little, like, open chanting sort of freeform thing with music, and sometimes they'll pass out instruments to people just showing up. Um, mostly it's the people who live there playing their own stuff. Um, it's, a, it's actually, like, really easy to at least make it work. Um, the issue then is, like, then making music that sounds passable with it. So, uh, Nico completely self was completely self-taught on uh, the harmonium. She just, like, picked it up at, you know, a junk shop in, New in uh, Greenwich Village and decided that she was going to teach herself how to play this, and I find her music beautifully haunting. So, um, so yeah, I do owe the Krishna House a debt of gratitude for, um, you know, like I said, learning through observation on the harmonium. Um, so that is that is my big three reasons for starting with the YouTubing and like starting for real this time. <laughs> As um, you know, it um, um, some form of music promotion for my uh, my own personal music and my DJing with my. Um, my station, <laughs> uh, WFKU.org, and you can listen anytime, it's, um, we've got a lot of live sets, and then there's the, um, um, you know, dynamic playlists, which I think half of those are just randomized, other times it's, you know, um, station manager, uh, Whiskey, he'll, like, put something together for, like, an hour and then just upload it to play whenever on the schedule, um, but no, there are several live sets from, you know, DJs a week, um, including myself, and usually those are also um, logged in podcast. I don't know if that's broken again or not, but um, if it's not, yay! Uh, if it is, um, tune in to listen to me live. <laughs> um, so, you know, music promotion, um, and uh, uh, socializing, and then just having a bit of fun. Um, as for music, I'm hoping during art fair in downtown Ann Arbor this year, I could bring out the harmonium and maybe do, so, do a live stream with busking. Um, if I can't do that, it's because my pain um, says I should not. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's about it. Uh, I'll see what I can cut out of this. Um, if I can... Uh, but this is going over half an hour. I was hoping to keep it 20 minutes or under, but yeah, I went off script. So, all right, lovelies, um, bats and kisses, and I love you all, and please like, subscribe, hit the bell, follow me. Um, I'm also on Patreon, and my primary income is disability, so if you um, want me to have a little bit more fun every month, um, not necessarily with YouTube, but just in general. Um, you could just, like, give me a dollar. <laughs> or not. Or not. At least buy some music, please. Ah, oh, dear. Ah, oh, I should probably shower. <laughs> I say this after I stretch. Alright, bats and kisses. Love you all, sweethearts. Bye-bye.